I did not know it right away, but our return to Venturum would demonstrate Zamera's balance yet again. Upon entering the city gates, we headed straight for the garrison. Sir Kaladin needed to report our return and the loss of Sir Isaac. Our journey through the streets took on the feel of a funeral procession. The Knights of Athala are highly respected throughout the kingdom, and though none of the people we passed knew who lay beneath the blankets, it was clear enough to them that a knight had fallen, and they silently bowed their heads to offer their respect as we passed. I remember feeling strange at this action. Having traveled the entire day with the subtle rumbling of the wagon behind us, of course we hadn't forgotten about Sir Isaac and Bart, but it seemed we'd at least made our peace with it. Seeing the townsfolk's reaction dragged us all back down to sorrow, grief, and now perhaps even a small amount of shame, feeling that perhaps we had moved on too quickly and not paid them as much respect as they deserved. That odd mixture of feelings is something I would become quite familiar with in later years. When our final duties to Sir Isaac were completed and Sir Caledon had made his report, the patrol dispersed. The other knights returned to their homes and Sir Caledon and I returned to his. Uncharacteristically, he allowed me to defer my typical duties, and we ate a quiet dinner. Both of us seemed lost inside our own heads and were perfectly content to allow the other to be as well. As I turned in for the evening, my body was exhausted from the trip and practically screamed for sleep, but my mind was wide awake and I couldn't silence it. All the events of the last few days came rushing back to me. I spent the night analyzing and over-analyzing every minute detail. I played out an endless series of what-ifs and what-now scenarios in my head, and by morning I had gotten little, if any, sleep. It was with a somewhat foggy mind that I dressed and headed to the stables to begin unpacking our gear from the trip, only to find that it had already been done. Confused, I began to look around, finding all of Sir Caledon's equipment cleaned, polished, and stored in the correct place, I became worried that he had perhaps become impatient and done it all himself. Sure, he had told me I could defer these chores last night, but perhaps that was only a test. A test I had clearly failed if he had had to do it himself. My mind swam through a hundred different apologies as I went inside to find Sir Caledon at the breakfast table. You must have been tired, he said with a slight grin. As I opened my mouth to begin whatever apology I had settled on, he raised a hand to cut me off. Eat first, he told me. Needless to say, I was stunned. I didn't know what to think, much less to say. I sank into a chair and began eating, just waiting for the inevitable lecture about caring for your equipment before yourself. It was a lesson he'd taught me long ago, and never failed to refresh my memory at every opportunity. Yet when next he spoke, that was not what I got. Do not worry about the equipment, he began. Jeems will be taking care of that from now on. From now on? My mind was instantly a flurry of questions. Was I being dismissed? Had I done something wrong? Had I been wrong before and failed their tests? I waited for answers, but none were forthcoming. He merely added to them. We are headed to the garrison this morning. Kindly put on something appropriate, he said, eyeing my well-worn clothes with a look of disapproval. And be quick about it, or we're going to be late. I changed as quickly as I could into the best clothes I had at the time, which weren't much, but at least they were clean, and we set off to the garrison. I could not fathom what was going on, and he seemed more than happy to keep it that way. He told me nothing, and as we entered the courtyard, my heart nearly stopped. There was an unbroken circle of knights surrounding the courtyard, most of them knights I had never seen before, but there, arranged in a straight line in the center of the courtyard facing us, were the other knights from our patrol. Standing like a statue directly in front of them was Prince Friedrich, the king's own brother and the first royalty I had ever seen in person. Clearly something big was happening. I had no idea what just yet, but I assumed it must be some sort of honor for Sir Caledon. What else could have garnered the personal attention of the prince? With customary deference, I lagged behind Sir Caledon as we made our way to the center of the courtyard. But when we finally came to a stop, Sir Caledon sort of thrust me ahead of him to stand directly in front of the prince. My lord, Sir Caledon said, may I present Dietrich, my student, and the real savior of Balric. For a moment, I was completely frozen in shock. All eyes were on me, and they were all clearly waiting for me to do something. The longer I stood there, the more awkward the moment became, but I found myself unable to do anything at all. It was Prince Friedrich that finally broke the awkward tension. He leaned forward slightly and half whispered to me in a kindly voice, You're supposed to bow, he said with a wink. That seemed to break the brewing tension in the courtyard. Everyone seemed to relax a little as I immediately bowed before the prince and issued a hasty apology for my ignorance of etiquette. 
In later years, I got to know Prince Friedrich a little better, and I always found him to be a kind sort of man. He wasn't a pushover by any means. He had a commanding presence and inspired respect, but he wasn't a stickler for the stuffy traditions of etiquette that some of the more pompous members of royal families insist upon. He returned the bow and launched into a short speech that was both gratitude for my previous service and an offer to continue it. Somewhere in the middle, I began to recognize the words. He was administering the traditional oath of fealty. Every squire knew those words because we all dreamed of one day hearing them, and suddenly, everything made sense. This was a dubbing ceremony. For me. The entire thing was quite unusual. This was hardly the traditional path to knighthood. Knights usually came from the wealthier classes because the equipment needed to serve was quite expensive. I had none of these things, but then nothing about my path had been traditional so far. Still in shock, I knelt before him and assented to all of the oaths without even considering them. The ceremony concluded as he tapped me on the shoulder with his blade and said, I dub thee Sir Dietrich. The rest of the day was a bit of a blur for me. Many congratulations from the other knights as they welcomed me to their ranks. Nothing but smiles from Sir Caledon who beamed with pride, although he did rib me a little for not knowing proper etiquette, something he promised to correct later. Back at his keep, there was wine, food, and some music in the Great Hall. Nothing over the top, mind you, but a small celebration attended by the other knights from our patrol, who had also put in a good word for me. It wasn't until I turned in for the night that I really had time to think, and it struck me. Balance. I hadn't been dubbed simply for killing the beast in Galbrick, but also because they were short one night. Sir Isaac. His misfortune was my good luck. It was a sobering thought. 